so many of you have asked how I recorded my screen like this in the previous POV video that I posted on my channel. So in this video I want to tell you exactly that and also three other ways how to record the EVF of your camera. Let's bring it! So first of all, EVF stands for Electric Viewfinder and why would someone need to record the EVF is basically there are a couple of reasons is if you want to show your menu settings, if you want to talk about what the camera has or if you just want to simply show how you take the pictures as I did in the POV video, if you want to show what settings you use, where you focus and so on. And basically there are four different ways how you can do it. Each next one is again a little bit more uh, convenient and also more expensive and some of them don't require any um, investment at all. So let's start with the first one. And actually the first one is by using your uh, smartphone and basically literally recording your camera's viewfinder which would be uh, this little thing with your phone. So if I would be opening a camera right now and literally I will try to demonstrate this somehow and if I would literally just put it on so you see how crappy it is but I've seen some people doing it and you can kind of see the settings and you kind of see the things that uh, I would record but as you can imagine this is just horrible and it doesn't work the quality is bad it's really hard to to manage to get the camera here so I would really advise you against this and rather use the second option. So, and the second option is actually what I showed you in uh, one of the previous videos of how to monitor your footage and just take a step further. So basically what you can do is, if you have an external monitor like the one I have behind, you can connect it with an HDMI cable to your camera, even with the Sony A6000. It has an HDMI port right here on the side. So once you plug it in, uh, you are able to see exactly what the, the camera sees on the screen. So then you need either your uh, smartphone or you can also use another camera if you have a spare camera and you can record your um, monitor. Exactly the same thing, you can also record this screen, but this is a much lower resolution screen than your big screen and also it's much smaller so it might not be ideal. So I'd recommend uh, recording the actual external monitor if you already have. An investment is not that big if you already have the monitor and if you have the cable. But option number three is something that you asked uh, a lot about and this is actually um, you, you were asking about the app, what app am I using in order to record the screen? Well, the app is not that important because what's important is that you have uh, this device and this is a device called uh, Cine i2 uh, from the company called Axon and I really really enjoy using this. Um, it actually comes with, it's, it's actually a wireless transmitter, it's not supposed to be uh, originally as the uh, screen recorder but I use it as a screen recorder so basically what you do is you connect uh, the Axon device with an HDMI cable to your camera uh, you also need the battery on this thing so it, it runs on the batteries and then simply you activate the Wi-Fi on your phone and then um, when the Axon is up and running you connect through your phone to the Wi-Fi and when you have that, you press on live monitoring and you have exactly, you see what the camera sees. And then if you hit the record button, then you're able to record exactly what the camera sees. And that video file is actually saved on your phone. And after that, I simply just uh, download that file from my phone. I store it in Google Photos uh, and have it saved on the computer. The quality is 1080p, you don't get the 4K quality, but 1080p is fine enough even for 4K video. You can scale it up to 200% as you can see. It looks pretty normal uh, even if I have recorded it out on the street or anywhere else. It looks pretty decent and it's quite convenient. The only downside is, and I haven't figured this out, is that the screen on the camera itself goes black once I connect it to the phone. Um, I'm not sure if that's Sony A6000's issue or if there's any other uh, workaround regarding that uh, but there should be because this is as I said meant for monitoring so there should be a workaround how to work with this 
I have a little device on top of the camera to hold the phone so I see exactly uh, what the camera sees so I'm not uh, you know shooting in the dark and then the fourth option and I think this might be the easiest one but it's also uh, very very expensive so basically you have two devices that you can use and uh, they are either Blackmagic or Atomos uh, external screen recorders I'm not really sure what the names are they allow you to record internally in that monitor already all the footage that you're filming and also you can record um, your EVF or whatever your camera sees as I told you this is very expensive um, device I think it costs like four or five hundred euros if I'm not mistaken or four four or five hundred dollars and and also I believe you have to buy um, an SSD or some external hard drive uh, and connect to it. With this device, I think it's it's a lot cheaper. It's some $250 if I'm not mistaken, and you don't need to buy anything else except the battery, um, which didn't come. I bought this myself, little small thingy or extra, and then the HDMI cable. Uh, I believe that comes also with the Axo and Cine i2. So you're basically um, set up with half of that. I hope you really enjoyed the. Uh, the video and I really hope it was useful for you and you learn a thing or two and I really really hope to see you in the next video. Ata!